بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله كفر in Islam and the term kufr has many different uses as a terminology in the Sharia and as we know that there is kufr the major kufr which takes a person out of the fold of Islam and the minor kufr which is a major sin but does not remove a person from the fold of Islam. And in some of the ahadith of the Prophet wasallam, you see the term kufr being used in a different way. Sometimes it is used to refer to that which takes a person out of the fold of Islam. And sometimes it is used to show uh, a type of ungratefulness or the minor kufr. Likewise, shirk is of different types. The major shirk which takes a person out of the fold of Islam and the minor shirk which does not remove a person from the fold of Islam. However, if a person dies upon kufr and dies upon shirk, meaning the major kufr or the major shirk, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, in the law, la yaghfiru an yushrika bihi wa yaghfiru ma aduna dhalika li min yasha. Very little Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive the one who uh, commits shirk, polytheism, but he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases. So if a person dies upon this, then they will dwell in the hellfire forever. I want to read a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which uses the term kufr and or refers to the kufra ni'mah or kufra ni'm and this is to reject and be ungrateful for something and Imam Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala in his fiqh he entitled this chapter, this short chapter Bab Kufran al-Ashir wa Kufr dun al-Kufr and we hear this term a lot the chapter uh, to be ungrateful to one's husband and disbelief is of different grades. Kufr dun al-Kufr, meaning referring to the lesser uh, Kufr. So Imam Bukhari mentioned this. And as we also in our studies have talked about ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, that sometimes that ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals takes you out of the fold of Islam, of course. And sometimes it is the kufr dun al-kufr, if they do it out of hawa, if they do it out of uh, shahwa, you know, out of their desires. And there are many details with regards to that issue, but I just wanted to highlight the different usage for a kufr. But let's listen to this hadith of Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, which talks about the kufr, as Imam Bukhari entitled, Bab Kufran al Ashir wa Kufr dun al Kufr. And it's translated as to be ungrateful to one's husband. So this is the term Kufr to be referring to Kufr al Ni'm. You know, Kufr, the ungratefulness of, of the blessings. An Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma qal qal al Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Arait al Nar. Uh, قَالَتْ Narrated Ibn Abbas the Prophet said, I was shown the hellfire and that the majority of its dwellers were women who were disbelievers or ungrateful. 
it was asked, do they disbelieve in Allah? Or are they ungrateful to Allah? He وسلم, replied, they are ungrateful to their husbands and ungrateful for the favors and the good charitable deeds done to them. If you have always been good or benevolent to one of them for a period of time, and then she sees something in you not of her liking, she will say, I've never seen any good from you. Habatifillah, this hadith is immense and immensely important for us, and especially for our Muslim sisters, the ones that are married and the ones who intend to get married. And it shows us the importance of being grateful and thankful to people in general. But specifically this hadith is referring to the importance of the uh, Muslim wife, the wife showing gratefulness to her husband. That in the case, and we find this often, that you find uh, some of our Muslim sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and guide them, that they have husbands who take care of them, husbands who spend on them, husbands who care for them, husbands who do good for them, husbands who even perhaps give them gifts. But one time he fails in such and such deed, or he fails in such and such action, or perhaps it could be even, uh, a, 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 there are many different scenarios. But the, the, the point being is that, as is mentioned in the hadith, they look to the one shortcoming, the one failure, the one time he didn't do such and such for her, he didn't please her in such and such manner, or he failed to do one of his duties. And then they followed up by saying, you never did anything for me. Ahabatifillah, this shows the kufr and na'm. This is the ungratefulness to the blessings that Allah has bestowed on the, peop on the people. Because as in the scenario I mentioned, here you have a brother who does the duties, who tries to do good, tries to care for his family, tries to uh, give love and affection to his wife. But then he, he messes up once and she doesn't look to any uh, of the good. She forgets all of the good and only re remembers this one act of evil or this one shortcoming. Likewise, a habitifillah, this can be the uh, opposite scenario, where the husband has a good wife. She cares for him, takes care of his home, cooks and cleans for him, uh, gives him what he needs physically, mentally, spiritually, that comfort, and, and so forth. But yet she fails once. He comes home, she didn't beautify herself, and he says, you never do anything right. Or... Perhaps she didn't cook this day, she slept in. Or perhaps even it was a greater time than that. And he forgot all of the, the goodness that she, she brings to the table. And he only reflects on the bad. So this is very important for us, a very important lesson, to be cautious and to be kind and gentle and forgiving with our spouses. And as one of our ulama mentioned about Another one of our ulama, but yeah, and I've told this story many times, but I'll, I'll, I'll save it for another time. But the point that the sheikh mentioned, and the sheikh was uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab al-Aqil. This was in Medina, may Allah preserve him. And myself and a couple of brothers were sitting with the sheikh, and we asked him about some advice for, for the, uh, with regards to husband and wife. And you'll find this advice, some of it was translated on Medina.com as some of the brothers who are responsible for the website were present. And one of the things the Sheikh mentioned that I always reflect on, and this is even a qaida in Jahiliya that we should understand for those people who have successful marriages, that it's based on tafahim, it's based on that understanding and that compromise that you will have to compromise in any marriage in order to keep it, keep those bonds. That you must, sometimes you may even end up giving up some of your rights. Because human beings are not computers. And although we try to live by the book, we try to live by Kitabi la wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will fail and we will have shortcomings. So we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness often. 
and we have to be able to compromise. So if you want your marriage to work, and this is general advice for those people who suffer marital discord, that you have to have compromise. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for anything that we said that was incorrect, anything I said that was correct from Allah Azza wa Jal, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.